Leslie, a uh, presenter at the AFD Revolution. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about, for the people at home, a little bit about the presentation you, d you did? The presentation was called The Art of Dying, and it was basically the inspiration of the monuments that were created during the Victorian era and their customs and how they observe death and how we and the, the 21st century are changing the way that we now observe funerals and there's a parallel and if you don't know the history of where it came from and the customs behind it you don't know how to build and keep going forward with it. And what would you tell the florist who uh, would like to try to um, up their funeral flower um, designs but still are afraid to try something new and uh, inventive and unique? Well, there's still a certain amount of tradition with it, but I think people do want something that is unique and special because everyone thinks that their loved one deserves something custom. And I think that's the thing to do is emphasize the fact that it is custom designed just for your, your, uh, that person that they're dealing with. Absolutely. Uh, whether or not it be um, a man who loves to fish and incorporating rods and reels or a woman who loves to garden and putting in garden tools, it's all just a matter of working with that customer uh, because sometimes it doesn't have to be as much as unusual as just personalized. And you definitely showed us the way uh, uh, some symbolism and how you've taken that symbolism and turned it into something amazing and I really really appreciate uh, the way you did it. Can you tell us some of the inspirations uh, that you um, used? The um Oh my gosh. The, the urn, for instance. Like the urn, okay. The urn was the most popular element used uh, in 19th, late 19th century monuments, and so it was just important to showcase that there were the different possibilities of urns, and the urns were in different forms and shapes, and so it was just uh, that as well as the obelisk, you know, that was the second most popular. And so it was just a matter of taking those forms, utilizing them, and showing them in a way that, that they work in today's world as well as in the past. And you definitely did a lot of research on other cultures and other religions and uh, what what were the most fascinating things that you learned? For me the most fascinating thing that I, did, that I didn't touch base on was the fact that uh, everyone is buried facing east regardless of their their faith or belief system but the tombstone markers themselves may actually be at the feet depending on how the cemetery is laid out. So a lot of people always think that assume the head is at the headstone, but sometimes it's actually a footstone. Uh, the other thing that I learned is that in Europe right now, uh, cemeteries are so overcrowded and land is at a, a all-time high, they are considering doing what they call double-decker graves, and they will be taking and selling the grave again. They will dig up the person who's originally there, put them down lower, and then the new person comes in and gets buried on top, and they're going to flip the tombstone around. Interesting. And you talked about being very close to your funeral coordinators and your funeral directors. Um, can you give any uh, tips on how, how to become a better acquainted with your funeral director? If you don't know your funeral director, you need to send them a letter of introduction, some flowers. You know, every, they're getting flowers all the time, but nothing for them. So send them some flowers, yeah. set up an appointment, find out what it is they want and they're looking for, because a lot of times they don't know that someone is willing to work with them and help them. Mm -hmm. And they are going to be your very best friend friend in the end because if they know that you're willing to create something unique for them, they're going to have clients who are wanting something custom and you build that relationship and you're not going to build a relationship sending out an email. It's got to be a face-to-face -face meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, can you just give us, our, what would you like Flores to take away from your, if you could just name one thing, what would you like Flores to take away from your presentation? I would like for them just to take away as a whole the understanding that sympathy work is an important and vital aspect of our industry. So many people have specialized in weddings and events and parties and there is still a need for that particular item. It may not be in the role that it used to play, but they need to understand that there is still a need for that service and going the extra mile during that time frame. If you can help someone in a time of need, they're going to come back to you and they're going to tell all their friends about you. And you did some amazing, amazing designs today. How, how many people does it take to put, put that together? Oh, uh, overall, I think we ended up with maybe a total of nine to 12 people wow. over the course of every day. Uh, 
and you cannot do it without the volunteers because there's just so much that has to happen in such a short frame to get it all done. Mm -hmm. And you know, I worked on the program for two years, and uh, it's all over in 45 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you did an amazing presentation. I know I learned a lot, and I can't wait to share it with the florist. Um, thank you so much for your interview. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for being such a great uh, influence on the floral design. Oh, you are welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.